Why, hello there. My name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, this is the Bellroy Transit Work Pack 20 liters. As the name suggests, it's a work or everyday use oriented version of Bellroy's transit line of travel bags. Now, Bellroy, of course, is the Melbourne, Australia based manufacturer of bags and other kinds of carry gear that I've talked about in the past on this channel and who I really think have been killing it in the travel game, these, in the carry game these days. Now, this bag's main claim to fame is that it's a you know, relatively compact and understated EDC use bag that holds a surprising amount of stuff for its silhouette with a pretty decent degree of organization. Its main weaknesses might be its lack of a sternum strap, if that's your thing, it's my thing, and a surprising degree of, or surprising amount of friction of access to this main compartment here. Now, before we proceed any further, I should mention I've owned this bag for I think about three weeks now, um, and I've used it every day that I've owned it, but I don't know that three weeks is enough time to give like a proper review of any bag. So consider this more like an overview and like my impressions based on three weeks worth of use. Now, in terms of like who this bag is for, it's obviously going to be for kind of work or urban EDC use kind of, um, you know, uh, commuters. And particularly if you're working like in a more casual professional office environment, um, this is going to be a great bag for you. It obviously is understated and it's not going to be, you know, like particularly flashy or anything like that. I think it's also a great bag for like one bag or sorry, for two bag travelers in that meaning if you've got like a roller luggage or something like that and you just want another small bag to bring with you on a plane, this is going to be a great bag for that. It's pretty compact, has lots of organization, it's small enough to fit in any kind of plane, uh, kind of carry on um, commuting uh, restrictions. In terms of who this bag is not for, it's not a great bag for outdoor use. So if you're going to be doing like, you know, crossover hybrid, like where you're in the city and then you're going to nip out to the mountains, this bag is not going to do it for you. It has a very poor suspension system for that kind of use and no sternum strap and it's just not the right fabric for that, I would say. And it's also not a great bag for one bag travel in terms of like, it's just really small in for that use pur purpose and the lack of a sternum strap, I think is going to actually hurt you in that case here. So this bag is obviously called the Transit Work Pack, which beggars the question, how is it different than the Transit line of travel bags? Um, so this here is the Transit line, or this is the Bellroy Transit 28 liter travel bag. And then next to it is we have the Work Pack. And this bag is packed out just like how I would have it for like, or just how I have it for any kind of like, you know, uh, overseas travel, although obviously we're not traveling overseas right now. So it's probably packed out to like the capacity I would usually carry it. And then this one is, is maybe underpacked a bit, but you can already see that there's a pretty big difference in size between these two bags, even though this is one of the smaller one bag travel bags out there. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. In terms of the main differences between these, the first thing you're going to see is actually like this one has like a kind of a zipper or kind of a flap sewn over the front zipper. And then it's just a standard reverse coil zipper. Whereas this one, it's going to be like a front um, aqua guard zipper with no flap on there. The inside of these pockets is the same, except this one, uh, and between these bags, except this one has the keychain in here, whereas the Bell Roy, uh, the work pack has it in a different location that I'll show you. Flipping the bag around to the back, you'll see one of the major differences between the bags, which is in the carry system. In the uh, Bellroy travel bag, you have like, these ridges, um, you know, big air channel in the middle, um, and then a much more pronounced lumbar bump on this one. And the shoulder straps are also going to be much more aggressively narrowed and they have a sternum strap, but they're just a little bit more complicated. And then it's really narrow down here. It's one of the things I didn't like about this pack. Meanwhile, on the work pack, you have a much simpler like back um, panel, no air channel, uh, no ridges or anything like that. And then you have like a much simpler, but wider, less tapered uh, shoulder strap with a kind of like a firmer kind of top layer, but no, uh, uh, and no sternum strap, as I mentioned here. The other kind of mine, not moderately different things about these two bags, if we open up the rear laptop compartment on both bags, in this one, this is the travel bag, you have like a, this internal pocket has like a firm, there's like a firm board here and it's zippered shut. Whereas on this one, the work pack, it's just a, a single flappy kind of soft uh, divider with no closing mechanism in there. <clears throat> the main compartment of the bags also has a major difference here starting with how far it opens up. On the work pack, there's still a little bit of a shelf when you open the bag. You can see here, there's a bit of a shelf. Whereas on the transit travel pack, the bag opens all the way to the bottom, 
completely flopping open. So here, a bit of a shelf here, and then here it's just all the way to the bottom. Speaking of the inside of these bags here, you can see in the work pack, we only have a single top mesh pocket, whereas in the travel bag, we have both a top mesh pocket and then a long, you know, full length panel pocket in here. And then finally, inside of the main compartment in the transit uh, work pack, we have this kind of small stretchy flat panel on the inside here. Whereas in the work or in the travel pack, excuse me, um, we're not going to have that same mesh panel. Instead, what we're going to have is more of a traditional suitcase style um, kind of compression straps, which you can kind of see if I move everything out, you have this kind of compression straps here. One thing that's retained besides the overall design language of these two bags is this incredible ease of packing. You can see how it's so easy to pack. This bag is one of the reasons I think why this bag is so popular. Um, and it's also carried over very well, in my opinion, into the uh, transit work pack, which is very easy to load stuff in and out of. So that's really like a quick overview of these two bags and their differences and similarities. So coming back to this bag here, <clears throat> starting with the exterior of the bag, the first thing you're going to notice, it's a relatively compact and small silhouette. And that's one of the reasons that I think it's uh, one of its strengths, in my opinion. Now it's available in four different colorways. This is obviously the black, but there's also like a lunar white, a blue, and then like a charcoal version with brown accents here. Um, the fabric is, uh, you know, varies, I think, according to the color choice, uh, colorway that you go with, but overall it's generally like a recycled, um, kind of fabric, uh, very eco-friendly. And then, um, it's understated. It's not like super sexy, like X-Pac or Dyneema or anything like that, but it's also like, you know, pretty robust, I would say overall. Um, the kind of only other thing I would say about the exterior of this pack here is that it has a little bit of like a. I guess like a lot of flex or give, like it's a fairly, um, it has some shaping to it, but when you start to pack it out, you can really pack out this bag. It like, there's some stretch or some gusseting in the bag that just lets it swallow up a ton of stuff. And I really like that about this bag and how it's constructed. We saw something similar with the Bellroy Weekender that I reviewed earlier. Like it just kind of just can seems to swallow up a ton of, ton of stuff. So, Looking at this bag, um, let's look at the different pockets here. So the first pocket you have is this full length external pocket here. Um, this one does not have the keychain that I mentioned in the uh, other trans travel bag. But other than that, it's got like just like a couple of internal pockets. And then here, um, a couple of pen pockets here. I just keep a couple of masks in this pocket. Um, this pocket has its own dimension. So this is part of what I was talking about just now. So you can actually fit a ton more stuff in here than I actually have at the moment. The one kind of annoying thing about this pocket is because this one has this kind of sewn over flap to get to the pens, you actually need to lift this flap out of the way, which is sort of annoying. I always find myself kind of like, you know, especially for this one in the end, like I'm always kind of trying to work my way into it. I just thought it was a bit annoying there. The second um, set of pockets on this bag or external pocketing or whatever are these two side pockets here. Now, I think Bellroy refers to them as water bottle pockets or they certainly show that you can put water bottles in here. This one here has a built in keychain, um, and that's where I keep, well, obviously my keys, but this is where they put that on this bag as opposed to uh, the front. And then on this one here, I have just like my, uh, some t a toothbrush set, some uh, hand cream because it's pretty, you know, dry these days and then some hand sanitizer. Um, these pockets are actually surprisingly volu voluminous, voluminous, um, especially towards the bottom, because this is kind of what I was talking about. Like it has like this hidden kind of flex in here. Now you can take something like a water bottle. This is a 355 milliliter water bottle and it just tucks in um, quite easily like this swallows it up. And one of the great things about, I think how this bag is made is you can see on the inside here, when I put it in, it kind of intrudes on the main volume, but you can also, if you have the main volume packed out, you can actually, it actually can push outward as well. So depending on how, you know, where the load is and how packed out this bag is, this can either be really, really low profile on the outside, like basically invisible and just reside fully on the inside or else can push out a little bit more so you can fit more stuff on the inside. And I love that 
manner of construction about this bag versus something like the Carryology, um, you know, Mystery Ranch Carryology Unicorn Assault Pack, where it's like anything you put in there just immediately intruded into the main compartment and robbed you of space due to the fabric choice there. So tuck this back in here. The next kind of um, pocket on this bag is gonna be this uh, top quick access pocket here. I've just got my phone in there. It's got this little bit of a stretchy mesh. And one of the nice things about how this pocket is made, and we've seen it in some other bags, um, <clears throat> is how it lays horizontally rather than vertically. And that means if you've got this bag fully packed out, it just lays on top of everything. The mesh is very firm, but has a little bit of give. So you can fit a bigger phone in there. You could fit a couple things like some earphones or sunglasses or something in here. Very easy to get in and out of. And this is relatively protected. I like that a lot that, about how this quick access pocket is made. Similarly, we have here the laptop compartment, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. And then we have the main compartment here, which I'll talk about in a second. Now, before we get into these two bigger compartments here, there is one thing I wanna talk about. Um, about the zippers particularly, which I think is maybe one of the most annoying parts of this bag, though I think it's not fatal, but it's not great. And that's the choice of these AquaGuard zippers. We've seen a lot of companies, uh, particularly like I think uh, Air, I've talked about in the past, use AquaGuard zippers for looks because the material itself is not waterproof. And they, while it is true that like often zippers are the source of, or the egress point for water, like there's a bit of kind of, I don't know, like not making sense of using a really heavy duty water, you know, watertight zipper when you're just using regular materials elsewhere. Now, obviously there is some water repellency to these materials, um, but still. Now, the reason why I'm not always a fan of that is because these zippers are kind of hard to use. Um, water guard, aqua guard zippers are generally have more friction by virtue of being waterproof. Um, and Particularly, this is a smaller gauge zipper. So what happens is you often, it will buckle under the weight of opening or closing. So you can see it kind of catches on there. So, okay, this is fine. And now if I want to zip up the bag, if I go like this, it's okay, but oftentimes it'll get caught. Like, actually now it's not going to get caught, I'm sure. Oh, here. So you can see it kind of gets caught because it kind of buckles a little bit and then you kind of have to... More often than not, I find myself using two hands to open and close a bag. Now, imagine you have the bag kind of slung over your shoulder and then you have to kind of catch it around this. It's not gonna break, I don't think, because Bellroy uses pretty high, high uh, quality materials, but I do think that this got this annoying friction um, that because of how it buckles and catches, you kind of have to kind of crank on it, I don't know. In an, I noticed this in the transit travel bag as well. Um, and it was a lot more tolerable there because you used a travel bag. So you're not usually getting in and out of this, but this one you're usually getting in and out multiple times. Oh yeah, see it's just caught there again, um, multiple times a day. So it is a little bit annoying. Um, it is a lot better now after, than it was three weeks ago when I bought the bag. So maybe it will continue to break in over time. I don't know. So we'll get back into the main compartment here in a second, but just flipping around to the back very briefly as mentioned. Um, very simple back panel. There's not really a frame sheet per se. It's a soft bag, has some flex to it. Um, I find it gets, it does well being worn high and tight against the body. Um, it has this sort of like lumbar bump that's part of the way that the bag sort of expands to contain things, but it still has a little bit of a bump here. Not as pronounced as on the travel bag though. Um, if you wear the bag kind of high and tight, you know, with this curve and then this kind of fits right in the small of your back, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. There's no air channels or anything to speak of. It's a pretty straightforward, like, you know, foam with a little bit of like mesh on top, which has a little bit of like give between the foam and the mesh surface. The backpack straps themselves, very simple. They're wider than on the transit travel pack, which I really like about these. I'm strictly in the sternum strap squad. So I wish that they had a sternum strap, but I found that this is surprisingly useful for me, usable for me, even without the sternum strap, partially because of the size of the bag. I don't carry that much, partially because of the way that these straps are constructed, uh, or maybe primarily because these straps have like a hard surface on the top. I mean, it still has some flex, but it's a stiff, flat, I don't know, plastic or something in here. And then there's this like kind of high density foam, maybe the same kind of foam as on the backpack, just sewn underneath. And 
doesn't buckle. It actually distributes the load pretty well, even without sternum, a sternum strap. And so for me, though I do like sternum straps, this bag has been very usable in EDC use as long as I don't overpack it. The rest of this is pretty straightforward. Um, you've got like a simple um, kind of well-sewn padded handle, uh, low profile, same materials like we showed as, uh, as we saw on like the Bellroy Weekender straps. Easy to kind of carry this bag. Um, actually for a fair amount of distance, I would say. These are nice, this is a nice handle. You see the same kind of strapping down here at the bottom uh, with a built-in strap keeper, aluminum hardware, a little bit of leather accent with a Bell Royale. Uh, overall, like it's a pretty decent um, suspension system that performed a lot better than I thought it would when I looked at it, but it's very like, it's also not a substantial one. So if you overload this bag, you will feel it. It's definitely not a bag made for like super heavy loads, okay? Um, while we're on the back area, let's open it up. And this is the main laptop compartment. Uh, I have in here a 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro. It will easily fit a 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. You can see there's a lot of space kind of left in there. You could fit even two MacBooks in there. And then as I kind of mentioned earlier, on the inside here, you have an additional kind of like hidden pocket here. Um, it doesn't like zip, zip or shut or anything. It's just like a soft kind of flexible divider. In here, I have chosen to put uh, my wallet, the Bellroy Apex wallet, uh, coin wallet, coin pouch, and then like a chapstick. Um, this is actually intended, I believe, for like a laptop charger or something like that. You know, you can tuck it in there and the idea is you go to the cafe, unzip one thing, you get your laptop out, you get your charger out and you're ready to go. For myself, I don't usually charge when I'm at the cafe. Um, so I store my laptop charger in another place, but it's kind of nice to have this here. I like that this one doesn't zip up. It actually makes it easier to get in and out of in an EDC situation versus the zipping one of the transit bag. Now flipping the bag around, let's get into the main compartment here. I've already talked a little bit about kind of how I just find these zippers to have some friction and I just find that I usually need both hands to try and get into it, but I can tolerate it. It's just not great. Opening up the main compartment, um, you have a single pocket at the top half of this um, inner flap. I wish there were two. Most bags of this style have two, you know, as I showed you before, or like the Go Rucks or Evergoods have two. And then um, on this top one here, it's made out of this mesh, which I quite like. Um, it's a very stretchy and flexible mesh, so it actually can swallow a surprising amount of stuff. Um, in here, I have chosen to have uh, my AirPod Pros, uh, like a screwdriver, a pen, some screen wipes, uh, some alcohol to sanitize my hands, a uh, flashlight, um, a lighter, and then like just a hairband. Um, this kind of like EDC dump pouch style thing, and I think that the stretchy nature of this pouch really encourages you to literally just dump things into there. Um, it's quite good. And you could fit a lot more, oops, as you can see, excuse me, you could fit a lot more in here than I have in there. The inside of this, of this pocket or this um, main compartment has a surprising amount of like capacity for you know uh, the size of the external silhouette of the bag. So, show you what I have in here right now. I have like my big headphones. Yes, I have AirPods in here, but that's like if I need to take a quick call or something when I'm sitting down to do work at like a cafe or co-working space. I'm going to have like a bigger set of noise canceling headphones. Uh, these are the Sony whatever WX. 1000 M4s or something like that. And I have like my tech pouch with all my like charger and mouse and stuff like that. Uh, as mentioned, I don't usually charge in the cafe. So that means like I usually keep it in the main compartment here. And if I go to the office, then I bring this thing out and I start charging. You know, I have all my stuff on the desk there, set up my computer. And then I have like a Bellroy note taker um, with a pen in there. Now, one thing that's sort of interesting, or I don't know, interesting, but worth mentioning. This is like a classic Bellroy classic pouch, which has inside of it now, like, you know, like a charger and battery and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I found myself not really using that because when you load out these pockets, as I mentioned, they can push out some, but I find that they naturally kind of intrude in a little bit. Now you certainly can pack this out to the gills and it'll push out as I showed you, but it actually is a relatively narrow bag at the bottom, surprisingly. So if I use this classic pouch, I kind of found myself having to almost double stack in there because you can see it's not that wide if you got stuff and you still want to maintain in these side wings and you want to maintain a svelte profile. It's actually, you know, this is a little bit more, you know, I don't know, like for me, svelte. And that's why I put all my stuff instead of in this wider classic pouch in like this larger 
pencil pouch or whatever they call it, Milroy, and then it just kind of fits in there nicely like this, right? And lets me maintain this felt profile and then just drop that in here. Now, that having been said, um, this is pretty much like a, an underuse of the total capacity of this um, compartment. And I'll show you a little bit more what you can do with that in a second. But just to finish showing you what we have in this loadout, you have in the back this stretchy panel. Um, and inside of there, I have like a document holder. You can also fit like a standard A4 document uh, folder in there, an iPad mini, and then like my Kindle in this little protective case here. And I like that they have this um, rear, you know, divider that's very, very low profile because it's actually very useful to keep things like this, which are a little bit delicate, just kind of flat against the back. So I don't have to worry about the screens getting damaged or knocked or anything. And then you could throw some stuff you know, on top there, and then is ready to go. Now, as I was saying, um, this is kind of an underuse, I think, of the transit bag, especially because like it does have this nice capacity here. So if we were to be loading a little bit more, let's take like this Roos laptop stand and just drop that in there, like a magic keyboard in there. So maybe we're gonna have a better kind of ergonomic situation at the working space. And you still have a ton of space in here. So then I'm gonna take something like a light insulated jacket here. This is, uh, I don't know what this is. This is an Arcteryx Atom hoodie, I believe. You know, um, in the shoulder season like now, you might wanna just throw something like that in there. Still tons of space. And then finally, we might wanna take something like um, a pair of gym shoes and workout clothes. And I think this is something that uh, Bellroy also shows on their site. And I think it's a good usage of a bag like this. Um, so those of you who have watched my videos before I've seen like I often carry like this is like my one of my standard kind of you know I have a pair of gym shoes in here and like a pair of workout clothes and like an air shoe pouch and you can actually just take something like this and just drop it in just like that actually let's put it in like this and you can see here despite this being a very svelte and small compact bag all of that fits very very nicely inside of this bag and you can see here what I was talking about. There's a slight amount of just like flex. You can see the side outside is flexed out just a little bit. We got a little bit of flex at the lumbar area, a little bit of flex in the front, like this sort of hidden gusseting that you didn't really see coming, just kind of comes into play. I love how much stuff I have in this very compact bag. And that's one of the great strengths, I think, of, of this bag overall. So if you're in the market for a bag like this, what are some other bags you might want to consider? Now, I think that the kind of, you know, black, black EDC, you know, 20 to 30 liter bag <clears throat> um, space is one that has obviously a ton of competition. I don't want to always be recommending the same things, even though often I find myself gravitating towards certain kinds of brands or bags. So here's a couple other options. Here's the Bellroy Campus, Campus Plus or Campus Bag Plus or whatever. Very similar, also Bellroy, a little bit more casual. You do maintain a lot of the same features, including like a top quick access pocket, separate external laptop access pocket, kind of internal power organizer pocket there. You get a sternum strap on this bag, more fabric choices and colors on this bag. I'm oh, sorry, more color choices on this bag. But you do get, I think in the end, a lot less or relatively less capacity because of the way that the bag is sort of constructed. It's a little bit you know, more like kind of classic and narrow shape, whereas this one you could fit a ton of stuff in, as I just showed. Another bag that I think um, is worth considering is gonna be the Evergoods uh, uh, CPL Civic Panic Panel Loader 24. This is the version one. There's a version two out. I don't have mine yet in the 24, um, but it's even better. Um, I own the 28 liter V2, so that one's based on that. I'd say the V2 of this is even better. This is a more classic rectangular shape. You have a lot, again, of the same features, a lot of external access, though not quite as much, I'm sorry, a lot of like uh, different pocketing, though not quite as much as this one. There's no like external water bottle holder. The Krampus bag I showed you had one on the inside. Same thing, you have sort of like this um, computer external pocket here, um, a little bit more internal organization uh, in terms of the front panel, same kind of mesh thing here. Um, the one downside of this bag might be that the material is a little bit more outdoorsy, but it also picks up a ton of like hair and lint. Um, I consider the suspension system on this one a lot. Actually, Evergoods makes some of the best suspension systems, in my opinion, in the carry game these days. So it's a little bit more robust than this one here. Also a great bag to consider, especially if you're a little bit more of an outdoorsy person. Um, another bag, speaking of outdoorsy, that often comes up, it's sort of similar. 
the go ruck this is the gr1 uh, 21 or 22 liter, the smaller one. Uh, this is the Huckberry special collab version, so there's no like Molly on here. Less organization on this bag, um, and it's definitely more like rugged or tacti cool. You got the same kind of external, you know, front pocket, but this one's a lot less usable than this one because it doesn't have its own dimensioning, whereas this one has a ton of its own dimensioning. You do get, same thing as the other bags, externally accessible laptop compartment. Um, and then on the inside, you can also see same kind of idea, internal flat pocket, a little bit of molly webbing up here so you can thread through a pouch or something, that's your thing. And then two pockets on the inside here. Honestly, like I feel like GoRux though, they are very rugged and they do have their place. Like they're starting to get outclassed in my opinion uh, versus some of the newer bags out there, especially for like urban use, right? But if you're working in a shop as opposed to like a more, you know, like, I don't know, like an office, then this might be like a shop or like an outdoorsy kind of thing. Uh, this is definitely gonna be a better choice for a work bag in that case than this one, in my opinion. And then finally, um, just to kind of mix things up a little bit, here's a brand that I don't talk very much about, Black Diamond. They're obviously known more for like their outdoors mountaineering kind of goods. This is also not a clamshell style bag. This is like a bucket bag, which I also don't talk about much about, but I actually kind of like bucket bags. When I say bucket bags, it's like a rope bag or, you know, like a, this is based off of like their Craig or their chalk, or, I'm sorry, not chalk bags, their Craig packs are kind of like, you know, bucket style bags. <clears throat> um, the thing that's cool about this bag is that it has a surprising amount of organization for a bucket bag, which you almost never see. Not only this, but you also get external laptop carry, external laptop access. Um, a pretty good um, strap system for what this bag is, including um, sternum strap. And then you also get a little bit of internal organization on the inside the bucket. And then you get like this nice, like big, you know, opening where you can throw in a ton of stuff in here. And it's really quick to get in and out of as most bucket style bags are, which is kind of the antithesis of what this bag is. So a little bit different, but I wanted to kind of mix things up. This is called the Street Creek 24. And so really that's it. If you have any questions about this bag, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And if you have any bags you would like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I own it, I will review it. Thank you very much.